What's up guys, Nikhil here, and today I'm here with a video about progression, how you can gain muscle in the most optimal manner. Now, just before I dive into progression itself, just some background, um, I've, I did a video on overload, which is the principle of progression, there's a higher principle of progression, and it's in my video of the scientific principles of training. If you want to know more about the scientific principles of training, um, it was it was done by Dr. Mike Isertel and Chad Wesley Smith. They developed it themselves, and my series is only just to promote it and just to kind of expose the information to more people. Because I think scientific principles of training is really the way everyone should be training, no matter who you are. If you are part of the general population, you should be following the scientific principles of training because it works for everyone. That's why it's principle. And another one is is that I, I did a video summarizing MRV, MAV. And MEV, all of those uh, volume landmarks that were coined by Dr. Mike Gezertal to kind of make training a lot more clearer and programming our training to be a lot more clearer and easier. So I've d I did a summary of that and it is in my Muscle Builder series playlist. So if you want to kind of get more understanding and get more practical advice, you can go there to check it out. But without, further any, without any further ado, let's talk about progression. So now, what is progression? So, it is the way you increase volume in order to see some muscle growth, right? I'm talking about this in a more muscle growth perspective because strength training will differ. So, I'm going to be keeping it into a muscle building talk. So, there's three ways of progression. You can pro progress in intensity or the weight on the bar, the total number of sets per week per body part, or the total number of reps, Right, so if you look at the volume equation or the equation for volume, it is weight times sets times reps. So it includes all these three variables multiplied together. Since it's multiplied together, when we increase any of these three or all of these three together, we increase the total amount of volume. And if we know anything about volume, is that one? It's one of the greatest independent factors of muscle hypertrophy, meaning meaning that volume. If you literally focus on your volume and you make sure you're getting that right, you will experience the most muscle growth. It is the biggest bang for your buck. So if we know anything about volume, it is that we need to accumulate it over a period of time and then have some, some kind of a break, whether it's a deload or a minimum volume phase where we recover and dissipate some of that fatigue we've accumulated during that phase. And then we go high volume again and then continue to cycle through that high volume and a break. So, just uh, some words just to give this talk some kind of context. We're going to be talking about mesocycles. And a mesocycle is one period of short-term training, meaning that it is about anywhere between five to seven weeks of training. So, that's including maybe, for the example of five weeks of training, like I'm using here in this example, we're going to be given four weeks on and one week off, meaning that we're going to have four overloading sessions per week. And then we're going to have one deload session where we're trying to dissipate some of that fatigue and replenish substrates and get ready for the next mesocycle and to hit it hard. All right, so now this here is going to be covering one mesocycle of training and this will be covering the squat. Right? I'm using the squat as an example. It's a basic compound movement that everyone should be including in their program. And it's very easy to implement progression into. Isolation movements are a little bit different, but you can see you can apply these same principles. And you can apply this to the bench press, squat, deadlift, even a chin up if you want. You can really apply this to anything. That's because it's a principle and it's very fundamental. So just so you understand why this is important. If you don't progress or use the principle of overload, you're not going to grow. It, overload is the second principle of training. So if you don't get overload right, you won't grow. Because overload means that you're... Pr providing your body with a stimulus that is greater than the one it has experienced before or is greater than the one it has adapted to, meaning that now you, you're you giving this body your hard training and now this hard training, your body's not used to it, it can't, it can't handle it, so it will overcompensate, it will recover and overcompensate by not only recovering um, muscle you've damaged, but also synthesizing new muscle tissue in order to you know, it's that overcompensation. It doesn't need to really build that much tissue, but it's doing it more again so that you're prepared and you'll, you know, do better in those activities that you were actually doing in the gym. So getting into progression is that we're going to be using that principle 
of trying to bring a heavier and more extreme stimulus each and every single time. Okay, extreme is not the right word, but just a harder stimulus each and every single time. So here with intensity, right, using the weight on the bar, we're going to start off with the squat on week one, maybe about 80 kilograms. Now on the first week, you typically want to be going about two to three reps before failure. Now, one mistake I made myself and I see a lot of people making is that they are always training to failure all the time. It is understandable that training to failure is a great way to train and it has lots of you know, good factors going for it in terms of muscle hypertrophy. But what we need to understand is that fail, training to fail all the time accumulates a lot of fatigue. And when we accumulate a lot of fatigue already in our first week of training, the other weeks of training are going to suffer. So if we train a failure in week one, weeks two, three, four are going to suffer because of that. And we're not going to be able to use as much weight as we can. And we won't be able to progress. Because if we fail the first time, and if we fail here, well, if we actually work to failure here on the first week, the next week we won't be able to go further than that because we've actually fatigued that muscle to the point where it needs now more time to recover than an actual week or whatever frequency you're training at. So it needs more time to recover than you initially planned for. So we won't be trained to failure here. Training to failure must be um, programmed specifically into your training program and it's usually incorporated in the last week or in this example it's incorporated in week four where you want to functionally overreach and we'll get into that just now. So then moving on from week one to week two, we're going to increment the weight. Here, I'm incrementing the weight by 10 kilograms each week. Just to note with increments, you can increment it by however much weight you want to. You can increment it by 2 kilograms per week, 5 kilograms per week, 10 kilograms per week, even 20 kilograms per week, but that's not usually going to happen. It's only going to be around 5 kilograms to 10 kilograms per week of weight increments. And you're going to see, depending on the exercise you're doing, you're not going to, um, it will kind of dictate the increments you're using. So if you're deadlifting and squatting, a 10 kilogram increment makes sense because you are, you are a lot stronger on the squat and deadlift than you are compared to the bench press. So on the bench press, you might be incrementing somewhere between 2 to 5 kilograms. Not only will it be exercise specific, it will also be according to the individual and your training experience. That also is also very dependent. You need to choose which kind of pro, um, weight increment you're going to use. So experiment. Start off with 2 kilograms, then try 5, then try 10. Right? You just want to step it up if you can. So going on, so we see how we are increasing the weights. As we're increasing the weights, we are slowly going closer to failure. So if our reps stay constant, throughout this in entire mesocycle. And let's say, for example, we're hitting eight reps here. We're going to be hitting eight, eight, eight. So here we can probably, in our first week with 80 kilograms, we can, we're can we doing eight reps. We can probably hit 10, but going to 10 would be failure. So we're not going to do that. Here, we, you know, eight is feeling quite challenging right now. We could push out nine, 10 reps, but you know, we're, we're going to stay on that eight. Here on week three, those eight reps are going to feel pretty challenging and you might be about one rep from failure. You're going to feel that you can maybe squeeze out a nine, but it's not going to be that possible. Then on week four, with 110 kilograms, this is basically you pushing yourself. This is basically the weight you would use when you're at your best and you're feeling strong. 110 kilograms are probably the weight that you would go to failure with. So if you do eight reps, on that 8th rep, you will probably not be able to even attempt a ninth rep because on that ninth rep, once you go down into the hold, you're probably not coming out and you have to dump the weight. So that's basically it. So as we're increasing the weight, we're going closer and closer to failure. And as we start going to failure, doing sets to failure on week 5 with a max load of 110 kilograms, you'll notice that's 30 kilograms lighter. So if we went to failure here, the intensity that we're going to failure with is not that big. But when we've progressed and our body has been adapting to the weight continually on a weekly basis, we can go to about 110 kilograms and go to failure with a weight that is 30 kilograms lighter than we could have failed on the first week. So when it comes into programming, you need to be able to create programs that do this, where you increase the weight and you start going to failure with loads that are quite heavy, and you always make sure when, just a note on going to failure, that you always have a spotter or you're using whatever equipment that you need to do so you remain safe. 
because um, doing heavy compound movements and going to failure can be dangerous, meaning that you can get injured seriously. With a squat, if you don't dump the weight properly, properly yourself or you don't have a spotter, you can get injured, you can mess up your back, your neck, your hip, most probably an, maybe your shoulder, something like that. So always exercise caution when going to failure. So here on the deload week, basically on the deload week, you have to reduce the weight and reduce the amount of reps you're doing. So it depends on how much weight you want to reduce it by. So the more... Yeah, the stronger you are, you want to reduce it by a lot more. Maybe a beginner might not have to reduce it by that much. It's very dependent and will kind of depend on where you are when it comes to your training experience and your age and so on. So that's basically going to cover weight. That is one of the three. Let's go into sets per week. And when I'm talking about sets per week, it's the total number of sets per body part per week. So when you go into sets per week, you want to start looking at something like MEV and MRV. MEV is the minimum effective volume that you need to do to start growing. This is the minimum amount of work you can do to actually grow the muscle. In MRV, that's the maximum recoverable volume. Meaning that if you hit that volume, you're just going to be able to recover. And when you're hitting MRV, your objective is to kind of stimulate an overcompensation response from the body. Meaning that you want the body to adapt to something that is very challenging for it, your belly, you're just going to recover and then it's that kind of like a slingshot effect. So you're going to pull the slingshot back and you're going to pull it back just before it breaks and then you want to let it go and you're going to shoot forward. That's that overcompensation effect because if you only pull it back about a little bit, so you're not going to shoot far that much. You won't, you won't even shoot even where you started by. So kind of the MRV thing is that you want to create that overcompensation effect of, of shooting yourself forward. So, uh, that's about MRV. That's the maximum you could do. Doing something uh, too much than that, you're going to be ripping the slingshot. And basically, you're going to pull yourself back and you're going to stay back. You're not going to get that slingshot effect and go forward. So, you're literally taking, you know, five steps back and staying five steps. So, now when it comes to sets per week, we're going to be starting off somewhere around four sets. So, this is, when it comes to sets per week, this is going to depend on your frequency. So when I'm talking about frequency, it's how many times per week are you training a body part. And in this example, when I'm talking about frequency, I'm going to be talking about training the squat twice a week. Right? Because, okay, that two is not so nice. But twice a week. So generally with something like legs, it's a pretty big muscle. For, for beginners, you can get away training something between three to four times per week. Let me not say get away, but you... Training three to four times per week may even be more optimal for you than training one time per week. So, a lot of studies have been shown to, to see that frequency has some kind of independent factor. For example, I'm, I'm going on the assumption that you're training about the squat twice a week. So, maybe you're training squats on Tuesday and Thursday. So, that's about, e about approximately an equal amount of rest between the two sessions. And now... Why I chose a frequency greater than one? Because it's very popular to see bodybuilders train legs once a week and they go like all out and that one week they do like, I don't know, six exercises, tons of sets, tons of reps, you know, they're going 20 plus sets on those weeks and that one day. So that is fine, but that's typically for bigger people because as you get bigger and stronger, the amount of frequency and the amount of, and the amount of times you can actually overload that specific muscle group will decrease. Meaning that the bigger you are, the less frequently you can train. So that means the smaller you are, the more frequently you can train. Or a better way of saying it, the smaller you are, a greater frequency of training will actually lead to more optimal muscle hypertrophy. So, uh, dumbing that down into more simple terms, if you are training the squats maybe three to four times per week, that will probably gain more muscle as if you were training one, just training the squats once a week. So... If you are a beginner or intermediate phase, training squats three to four times a week will be very optimal. A lot of people um, from bridging the gap from intermediate to advanced phase will probably be training squats around twice a week. That's generally where a large population is training and that is kind of a good, good place to train because it's kind of convenient to train kind of legs Tuesday and Thursday. So going on that, on that example, not going too much into frequency is that Basically, the total sets per week is going to be double this. So let me just write that down underneath it.
Okay. Now, take in mind, I'm only incorporating the squat. I'm giving it some kind of realistic numbers here. So maybe you're also training deadlift along with the squat. So these total set numbers per muscle group will also, you know, add on. So if you are doing something maybe like a leg press and squats, those are going to add to the total number of sets per week on your quads. So we'll go into that a little bit later, but this is just for a specific exercise. So you're going to start off maybe around four sets per week, right? I mean, there's nothing too amazing there. There's nothing too hardcore. At the end of the week, it's eight total sets in the week. That's nothing hardcore. Moving on, week two, we're hitting five sets on one day, and that's around 10 sets um, per week. The next week, going on to week three, that's about six sets. That's 12 total sets in the week. That's going to be when you're including other exercises such as leg press, deadlifts, RDLs, whatever else you're doing. That's going to kind of add up to a lot. You're going to be pushing yourself on week three. You're going to find it to be very challenging at week three. Week four, this is seven sets, 14 total sets at the end of the week. So only squats. Remember, you've got probably other things, lunges, leg press, all kinds of other exercises. 14 sets in the, in the week by itself, only one exercise. You're going to be feeling pretty beat up at the end of this week, especially because you're going to be hitting heavy numbers for seven sets each session, and you can hit that session twice a week. So here in week four, we're going to be doing functional overreaching. And that is that same idea with the slingshot where you want to pull back as far as possible, not breaking the slingshot, and then shooting yourself forward. So here... And week four, we're going to accumulate a ton of fatigue. And you're going to accumulate so much fatigue that you're going to be like, damn, fuck this, I'm not going to be training the next week. I need the deload. That's the kind of, um, kind of fatigue you should be feeling. Because at this point, you shouldn't be looking forward to your next training session. I don't care how passionate you are about lifting. You're going to want that deload because you're going to be pretty beat up after that training session. Yes, you will have enjoyed it thoroughly if you are passionate about it. But you will not want to train afterwards because you're going to be very beat up. And a lot of people actually don't get this feeling because they'll train to failure and they'll go so hard on their first week that they won't be able to accumulate enough fatigue to actually stimulate muscle growth. As compared to this program, when you actually stimulate fatigue in an increasing manner, where you increase it along the week going up and up and up, you actually, the max point of fatigue is higher than you would if, if you picked out here in the first week. So the total amount of fatigue generated using this kind of intelligent programming will be much, will be greater than, you know, haphazard programs where you're just, you know, hitting max squats whenever you're feeling great and whenever you want to do it. So this is a more intelligent way to program and the best, not the best way, more intelligent way to program and to actually create some overload and a stimulus to actually Stimulus to actually grow muscle. Now, probably taking up a lot of time talking about intensity and sets. Now, I took up a lot of time talking about that is because those are probably the two most important or the two most frequently or commonly used <clears throat> variables when it comes to changing the vo um, your volume. When it comes to reps, not a lot of people choose reps or manipulate reps during our, during the mesocycle because typically with reps, when you're not fiddling with intensity too much and you're not fiddling with the weight on the bar, if you are changing reps, you will be you know, going to failure a lot quicker. And it, it could cause some problems. It's typically not, not something you want to fiddle with too much, especially if you are a beginner. If you are a beginner, I recommend going just some straight numbers throughout the whole week. But just an example, just an example, let's say you start with eight reps, then you stay with eight reps because you don't want to you know, just jump the reps up too quickly because you're going to reach failure really quickly and just, you know, burn yourself out too early, right? Eight reps, eight reps, then 10, 10, and then drop down to six because of deloading. Now, typically, you want, you want probably, if you are doing something called double progression, meaning that you're progressing in your weight and sets per week, that's double progression, you're progressing in two things. Triple progression, when you're progressing in all three things, tends not to be used because it's very intense and that will lead to shorter mesocycles and short mesocycles, like around three weeks, is generally not going to be optimal for the general population. Just a quick note when I'm saying general population and things like that. A lot of people tend to review studies and review kind of literature and research 
that kind of maybe indicate to some extremist ideology, meaning that they, these are kind of number. maybe they use numbers that were, you know, for the outliers or something, or they're not reading the research properly, and they go through some very extreme ideas. Because if you take this idea out of context, saying that if you increase volume, you basically increase muscle hypertrophy, and you just say, okay, let's increase muscle hypertrophy and volume by increasing the volume as much as possible. So let's increase weight, sets, and reps. And let's just increase volume as fast as possible and pick out, let's go, two-week program. One first week, we just introduced exercise. Second week, we functionally overreach. Third week, we rest. A lot of, some people say that. A lot of, I, and this is, maybe not a lot of people say that specific case, but there are a lot of cases where people introduce extreme kind of techniques where it's like drop setting every week, doing super sets every week, doing kind of all kinds of crazy things every single week. Those things typically don't tend to be sustainable. What I mean by sustainable is not about willpower and things like that, is that the actual human physiology won't be able to handle it. Meaning that your cortisol levels or your stress levels are going to be through the roof. You're going to be overtraining and not recovering. Or maybe you're not going to be able to... Another um, common symptom with overtraining is that you're not sleeping properly anymore. Throughout the day, you're going to be feeling busted up and just... You know, you're just going to be feeling completely wrecked and beaten up. Your testosterone is going to be low, so your performance as a male is just going to be crap. So, be careful when you are kind of looking at something that seems like very flashy because these things that seem very flashy and trainy tend to be kind of bogus. That's that, I'm not saying that's a rule of thumb that if it's very flashy it's bogus. I'm just saying things tend to be like that because training in itself is very is like a lot of fun but planning the training is very boring. I mean look look at this this is boring. We're just adding weight of 10 kilograms that's boring. We're increasing you know sets by one every week that's boring. Right, but this is stuff that you have to do. People are saying, you know, just go all out every single session, do whatever exercises you want, you know, mix it up all the time, confuse the muscles, blah 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 blah. When people start to say things like that, it's because they, they don't want to advertise how unattractive intelligent programming is and you know, optimal muscle hypertrophy is. They don't want to explain that because you know what, this video is probably not going to get a lot of views. This video is not going to get as many views as other more flashy videos saying drop set every week for bigger muscles you know my my freaking title for this video is not going to be that it's going to be probably the principle of overload and the sub principle of progression because that's what it's called you know that's literally the name for it there's no other flashier name like progression double muscle size not going to have stuff like that so just closing off the rant this isn't a rant video this is about progression this is how you progress. This is how you increase volume in the most intelligent manner. You want to be doing something like this. This is going to be for compound movements. For isolation movements, that's where you actually start filling around with reps. So maybe with isolation movements, you want to go with a, keeping intensity the same. So let's say you bicep curling, I don't know, 20 kilos, 30 kilograms, let's say 30 kilograms. You're going to keep that 30 kilograms constant for the whole week and then you're going to be going, I don't know, 10 reps, 10 reps, 12 reps, 12 reps, 15 reps, and then deload. Something like that. So that's just an example. With isolation movements, you can be very flexible with it. Typically, increasing your intensity or your weight will not be, you know, a way everyone can do it. Just because um, the increments we can use won't be anything significant. Like adding 2 kilograms every week will actually be, be quite a bit. Stronger people can actually do this, but beginners to intermediates will actually find it increasing the weight will actually be more difficult because you're a lot weaker as compared to a lot stronger individuals who can do this. So you typically, as a beginner or intermediate, you don't want to be focusing on this. You maybe want to be focusing on total sets per week. So maybe week one, you're doing 10 reps, your reps stay constant, your weight stay constant, and you're just increasing one set per week or something like that. So that's something you can do. And just before I forget, if you do want to do something like train biceps and your delts um, with a high frequency of something like four times per week, that is actually very optimal for beginners and intermediates and sometimes advanced individuals because 
because of different uh, factors according to the anatomy of the muscle but we can go through that in a later video so just for this this can be applied to compound movements you really want to be doing double progression for most of your compound movements you want to be doing just single progression with sets per week on most of almost all your isolation movement and this all together progression will help you gain more muscle because just to give some background you're introducing a new stimulus to the muscle every single time because when people say muscle confusion what that really means is that you're providing a greater stimulus to the muscle every single time meaning that the muscle has to adapt because think about this if you do five push-ups every day for the rest of your life you know by fact that that's not going to get you very big so you, maybe if you do five push-ups for a month then maybe 10 push-ups the next month 20 push-ups the next month and you go all the way up to 100 push-ups each month that will actually you're gonna see that you know what hey this guy's push-ups is going up every single month he must be getting bigger and stronger every single month that same idea here but now we're putting it into a more solid concrete format that you can actually use because this here is something you want to actually use maybe you can even use this as a template and then just change the weights, the reps, and the, uh, and the sets. Because you typically want to be doing this for every single exercise. And then maybe on your week four, right? To, because you are going to failure, because it's maybe set out to maybe eight reps, maybe you hit out 15 reps on your first set. That's going to be your PR. And then you want to track that number. And then on the next week, you're going to be aiming maybe to beat it out again when on that first set that you're going to failure on the last week. So that's going to be wrapping up this video. I hope you guys learned something useful about progression. Um, I just want to know just some feedback about the video if it was too long. Maybe I blabbled on, went on a rant for too long. Or anything I can improve about the video. Because I always want to give um, good content to you guys. I want to spread good content across YouTube and especially when it comes to training this is the kind of things I didn't know when I was training because when I started out training I was just kind of doing random things I wasn't using any kind of progression and, I'm, and I really regret not, not knowing this because this is really a sure way of how you actually grow and if you notice why beginners grow so quickly is because they can progress a lot faster because for my personal example I went from barely being able to do 5 push-ups to bench pressing 50 kilograms. And the kind of size difference you see between those two kind of transformation pictures is a lot. So that's just progression and you get progression. I mean, progression can have huge, huge results and huge impacts on your physique once you start incorporating it intelligently into your program. So hope you guys enjoyed it. If you do like it, please like the video and please share this video. Share it to your friends who need to hear about progression because they may they probably be doing dumb shit as well. So hope you guys like the video. I'll catch you guys next time. I'll probably be doing another video, maybe about um training biceps every day. That's a good video. I actually do that myself. And I'll explain why it's effective and why you should do it. Catch you guys 